today I want to talk about um, a mystery grape I've been growing here for a few years. Actually, this is year four. It's called Gray Street Grape. Uh, here you can see it's consumed the roof of the quail pen. Well, I've got a bag of CC's Pete's up top here to get ready to feed to the chickens and the quail. This is the farthest reach of this grape. I'm going to go around. Let's go around the quail pen to the hen house. And Gray Street Grape is now leafing out dramatically now that we've had a warm up. It does a couple things here. Is it shades the hen house in the summertime. The leaves are dropped in the fall, of course, so it becomes a sunny uh, hen house in the ch so called chilly winter months here in Florida. And the reason I'm excited about this grape is in its fourth year of life, it seems to be finally setting its first ever grapes. I threatened it this winter. I told it if it didn't make uh, grapes this year in its fourth year, I was going to cut it down and replace it with some grapes that I've purchased that do set a uh, fruit here in Florida. Uh, people who live up north might wonder what's the big fuss about grapes, but Florida is notorious for the, uh, the, Cal the conventional California type table grapes not growing here and also the northern Concord type not growing here. Here's the trunk. I planted it uh, four years ago. I dug it up from a rental that was going to be bulldozed on Gray Street in Tampa, so I called it Gray Street Grape. The first couple years it barely grew. Last year it took off after I gave it a feeding and a deep watering and it had a mature root system. It flowered also last year for the first time, thousands of them, but at the wrong time and it made one stinking little grape which oddly was red. I'd expected it was going to be a wild uh, purple grape called Vitus, uh, oh I forget the name, Estivalis. I had speculated it was a wild grape called uh, Vitus Estivalis which will grow here in Florida in the wild. Uh, but those make little purple grapes and this was red and looked very much like a table grape. But wherever I look now I feel like I see bloom clusters ha are turning into small grapes. Here's an actual bloom cluster when, the, uh, when they're in the flower stage and you can see the difference. Now around the end here, here's a grape cluster of a different kind of grape that I call Gracie's grape and here's where the plant starts here. Gracie Valdez, who passed away a few years ago from cancer, uh, was the mom of my old junior high school friend Mike Valdez and years ago uh, an old man on her block um, who had the hots for Gracie, who was a grape grower, gave her this grape in an effort, yet another effort to seduce her and Gracie, who was really hot for a woman in her 60s and 70s, uh, found the guy repulsive, which was an ongoing jerk, uh, source of humor and joking between us. Anyway, uh, I was able to root finally, after years of trying, uh, to root uh, a Gracie's grape. I've long felt it's the variety uh, called Blue Lake. Uh, it was bred in Florida, I think in 61. Uh, it has conquered in its lineage. Uh, whatever Gracie's grape is, she gets massive clusters uh, in the, well, get August into September, if I recall. Wonderful flavor, dark purple, your classic purple grape flavor. And I think this year Gracie's grape is also going to make its first good crop. Uh, here's a really nice cluster here. And this plant, I think, is now going to be three years old, if I remember from that small rooted cutting. What I'm hoping is since Gray Street grape is so incredibly vigorous, as you can see, and it's not even really begun consuming the hen house. Uh, let me step back for a better perspective. This is, believe it or not, just the beginning of the growth phase. It is by the end of summer, actually midsummer, I'm going to be out here pruning it constantly just so I can get through the pathway. Uh, then last year, when I built this quail pen, in just three months' time, it completely consumed the uh, ceiling. Oh, here's baby chick. This is a chicken that the I hatched last winter that the others will not accept, and so I'm slowly I, uh, socializing her from her isolation. But that's her little safety pen where the chickens can't mess with her. But anyway, you can see how Gray Street Grape simply swallowed up the roof of the quail pen, and in, by last fall had completely reached the far end here. And I'm constantly hacking off excess growth that goes past the edge just so I can get to the back patio where I take my solar showers. Uh, what I'm going to do is periodically keep people 
updated about this grape, especially Floridians, because we're notorious for uh, being basically being grapeless except for the muscadines. And a lot of people do not like muscadine grapes. That's one reason I'm pursuing this. A lot of people find their skins too tough and very much resent the seeds. Here's Gracie's grape again. Let's go one, one more time. Oh yeah, look at all these clusters here. Now this is Gracie's grape, which is a reliable fruit setter. Last year, even though she was a little baby, she made several of wonderful tasty clusters. Let's see if we can get in here and see. What I'm curious is if Gray Street Grape produces a good crop this year, the challenge is to really come up with its true identity. I've Googled extensively grapes that will grow in Florida well that produce red fruit and I found a couple leads but so far nothing really conclusive. One of the things I find interesting is the leaf shape. You can see there's a palmate effect going on whereas Gracie's grape is much more rounded and almost like a almost like a heart shape. There's the girls getting ready to lay their morning batch of eggs for me. That's pretty much it. Is I know people who live up north and out west will think, you know, what's the big deal with grapes? But if this proves to be a reliable grape for Florida, uh, even if I can't identify it, I want to try to root cuttings of it and begin selling it to people as a way of having a vigorous, healthy grape. This never gets any insect issues, any fungal issues. Uh, and now, since I threatened it with extinction unless it set fruit, this is its last chance. If it does, if these do like last year and all the fruit drop off, uh, then I am going to uh, cut it down, dig up the roots, and plant it, replace it with these over here. I purchased these last year mail order. They've been growing in five gallon water wise container gardens to get mature. Uh, there they are, and those buckets right there. Uh, one of those is a hybrid muscadine called uh, Southern Home. And another one is a Blue Lake that I purchased at, I think at Lowe's. And the third one I purchased, I've read about extensively. It's a grape for Florida called uh, Conquistador, which is supposed to be a purple uh, black grape of the Concord type. So that's pretty much it. This is the latest grape update on Gray Street Grape and Gracie's Grape. And I won't bother to make another posting um, about it. Uh, if there's not a good fruit set, which I expect I'll know probably within six to eight weeks. Have a good day, y'all, and happy gardening. Bye-bye.